Ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking for Jayla. I don't know where she is, but I'm gonna find her and I'm gonna scare her. Let's see if she's here in the SMC. gentlemen cp kids welcome to another video all right well ladies and gentlemen here i am with jayla <laughs> sorry i interrupted your bible reading your worship time um we are here to bring you guys another dope video and the first thing that we want to do is we want to play a game you want to play a game uh yeah i'm ready for my revenge <laughs> <laughs> guys do you remember last sunday when we did the airplane game uh yeah i sure do <laughs> It was awesome. Um, hopefully your airplanes flew better than Jayla's. Uh, today's game is a three-point challenge, and I'm about to tear it up. That's funny. I'm going to tear it up. Uh, I'm about to win this thing. Let's go play this game! <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the three-point challenge. What you have to do is you have to have five pairs of socks. One, two, three, four, five. And then you also have to have a laundry basket or a basket or a box or just something that you can shoot into. What you have to do, take 15 steps away from the laundry basket. Once you get to your 15th step, you're gonna turn around and that is gonna be the distance that you have to shoot from. I remember for a three point contest, you have to shoot from five different spots and at each spot you get five shots. That's what the five socks are for. Whoever scores the most out of all the spots and all the shots put together wins. It's that simple ladies and gentlemen. Who's it gonna be? Mom, dad, make sure you get on, get in on this and play as well. The boys are gonna win. No way, girls always win. Girls rule. No, boys rule, <laughs> girls rule. <laughs> What's going on everybody? Hey, listen, I was just enjoying my backyard for a minute, drinking some sweet tea, but then I saw something crazy. And that was a couple squirrels, and I think that they're gone right now. I mean, yeah, I don't see them, but listen, there were a couple of squirrels out there that were just going nuts. They were fighting each other. Like they were chasing each other everywhere. One was going, you know, up one side of the tree and the next one would go up the tree chasing it. And I mean, they were right there and they're just fighting and they were going along the fence and they'd hit the grass and they'd keep running. You ever seen squirrels fight? Well, listen, I was watching those squirrels fight and it got me thinking, thinking about if you were about to get into a fight right before you got into the fight, someone gave you a choice and they said, either you can fight this fight with a sword Swing. Or you can fight this fight with a stick. Yeah, stick, yeah. Who would pick the stick? Ain't nobody in there right am I gonna pick the stick. Okay, I guess we found some people who would pick a stick, but what if you were fighting against her? Swing. Exactly. It's going to make you rethink. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what if I told you that a lot of people, including us, every single day in the fight with the devil, we pick the stick. Now, what do you mean by that? 
When we pick the stick, when we choose to listen to man's words over God's words. We pick the stick when we choose to take our friend's advice rather than what the Bible teaches us to do. We pick the stick when we choose to do what we see in the movies and hear what we or do what we hear in music over doing what we hear from the word of God and what we read from the word of God and what we're taught from the word of God. See, the word of God is the sword that we fight the enemy with. But man's advice, the words of men, the words of our friends, the words of, you know, everything else that goes against what God teaches us to do, well, that's that's the stick. And it doesn't make much sense to fight with a stick. Now, before I get in too much into this, what I want to do is I want to show you guys a Bible story. And this is Peter and some apostles, and they had a choice to make. They could either fight with the sword, the word of God, and go and do their life and go with everything based on the word of God, or they could do their life and base everything on the words of men. And we're going to see what they do, what they choose, and then we'll come right back here when we're done. So check this out. Stories of the Bible. The Apostles and the High Council. These are the Apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. See ya. After he went to heaven, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be their helper. Then the Apostles spread the good news about Jesus everywhere they went. The Apostles performed many miracles and healed the sick. They met regularly in the temple in Jerusalem, and many came to believe in Jesus. Huh. All this made the Jewish high priest and his officials very jealous, so they arrested the apostles and put them in jail. But an angel of the Lord came in the night Whoa. and opened the gate of the jail. The angel told them to go to the temple and tell people about Jesus. Got it. So at daybreak, the apostles went to the temple and told people about Jesus as the angel told them to. Meanwhile, the high priest and his officials called together a meeting of the high council. They sent the guards to bring the apostles out of jail, but when they went to the jail, they were gone. Wait, what? They returned to the council and reported that the men were gone. Guess what? Then someone arrived and announced that the men who were in jail were standing in the temple, teaching people. Go get them! The captain went with his temple guards and arrested the apostles. Come on, you. They brought them before the high council. The high priest said, We gave you strict orders never again to teach in this man's name. Um... Yeah, but... But Peter and the apostle said, we must obey God rather than any human authority. They told Jesus' story that he was raised from the dead after they hung him on the cross and that now he was in heaven. They told them that Jesus did all these things so that people of Israel would turn to God and be forgiven for their sins. This made the high council furious. <laughs> and they decided to kill the apostles. But one Pharisee named Gamaliel stood up <clears throat> and ordered that the men be sent outside the council for a while. Then he warned his fellow Jewish leaders that killing the apostles might bring more trouble than good. He advised them to leave the apostles alone. Not a good point. The other Pharisees saw his point and accepted his advice. They called the apostles in and had them beat up but they didn't kill them. They ordered them to never speak in the name of Jesus, and then they let them go. The apostles left the high council happy that God thought them worthy to suffer for preaching the name of Jesus. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they continued to teach and preach this message. Jesus is the Messiah. So, Peter and the apostles had a pretty big decision to make. They could live their life based on the word of men, 
or they could live their life based on the word of God. And let's go to Acts chapter 5, verse 29, to see how Peter responded. It says this, But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. And you saw at the end of that Bible story that they actually kept going out and they kept preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, the situation that Peter and the apostles were in was pretty tough and they needed a guide. They needed something that could help them navigate through all of these tough situations through the fight. And they knew that the word of God was a guide. Have you guys ever needed directions somewhere before? I was trying to get directions to someplace earlier. Yeah, it's so what? It's Long's Bakery. I wanted some donuts. But listen, I had to get directions there. It's kind of a far distance from my house, but good thing I had this map here to guide me all the way there. See, Peter and the apostles knew that God's word would guide them through that tough decision. And it worked out. The other thing they knew is that God's word is the light to our life. When we're in a lot of dark situations and dark times and hard times, God's word is what can bring us hope and life. See, and Peter and the apostles knew that the word of God is like a lamp to their feet. Now, the next thing I wanna illustrate is the fact that it matters what you fill yourself with. You can fill yourself with the word of men or you can fill yourself with the truth. Now, I'm gonna illustrate this by using these two balloons. These two balloons are exactly the same. When I let go of them, they both fall. Now, let's fill one with the word of men. You see, the word of men is exactly what we've been talking about. If someone makes you mad, fight them. If someone takes something from you, steal something of theirs. We're gonna fill this one, though, with truth. Yeah, I got a little can of helium here. Y'all didn't know you were going to science class, did you? School's out. But not with Chad Measy. Ladies and gentlemen, in this, balloon, in this balloon right here, I have helium. We're gonna call it truth. You see, in life, we can fill our minds, our hearts, our life with the word of men, or we can fill it with truth. Watch this. One rose, one fell. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one choice to make. What are you gonna fight the enemy with? The words of men, or truth, the sword. You see, ladies and gentlemen, what it boils down to is that every single day the enemy is fighting us. And the way he fights us is by trying to get us mad or angry at our brothers or sisters, our moms and dads, people at school, people in the neighborhood, just doing whatever. He tries to get us upset. And when we go based on the words of men, see, men will teach us when someone makes you mad, fight them. If someone takes something from you, steal something of theirs. See, that's the word of men. But that's like fighting the enemy with a stick. It's just not gonna work. It's gonna get us into more and more trouble. Every time we choose to fight with a stick, the words of men, the guidance of men, the enemy wins. But what we can do is we can fight the enemy with the word of God. See, the word of God teaches us that when someone is making us angry, give them love. If some, somebody steals something from you, give them grace. And every time we choose to fight with the sword, the word of God, we beat the enemy. We win. Portland has a timeout. Lillard, a chance to send the thunder home. Lillard, long range three, and it's good! At the buzzer, Damian Lillard! Are you kidding me? So, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys want to learn how to fight the enemy with the sword, all you got to do is pick it up, read it, and then talk to Jesus every day. Tell him you want some help. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I just want to say thank you for giving us examples in your word, like Peter and the apostles, where they had to fight a bunch of tough stuff. We got to fight some tough stuff too, but if they can make it, so can we. So God, I pray that you would help us to fight the enemy with the sword. Help us to not give in to just the easy way of what everybody else is encouraging us to do, to fight, to be hateful, but God, help us to be what your word encourages us to be, to be graceful, to be full of love, 
and to love others, Lord. So God, I pray that you would help us to choose every day to not fight with a stick, but to fight with the sword. We love you, Jesus, and in Jesus' name, amen. Oh, before I forget, the new challenge for this week <laughs> is to memorize Acts chapter nine. What I meant to say was memorize Acts chapter five, verse 29. And once you can quote it without cheating, don't be looking at paper, don't be asking people for help. Once you can quote it without cheating, send us a video of you quoting Acts chapter five, verse 29 to the email right here. This one right here. And thank you guys very much. Hopefully you guys have had a good time today and we're so excited to see y'all in that next video. Let's go. <laughs>